Chapter 15, Trematoda, Ford and Function of Degenians. Part 2, Body Function. When you look at the overall body form of the general Trematoda, they are varying in size. Some quite small, barely able to see. Without a magnifying glass, some can be quite large. It's all relative. What you're going to see, though, is there is a roughly set generalized shape to all the trematodes, or what we also commonly refer to as the flukes. As you see here, this fluke has a generalized shape. It's a elliptical, almost oval, shape to it. There will be an anterior and a posterior end. Anterior end, generally you're going to find some form of an oral opening. Posterior end, it's where you're going to find, you know, many of the reproductive organs. The anterior end, surrounding the mouth, you're going to find an oral sucker. Remember, these are multicellular organisms, millions and billions of cells in size. So there's going to be, you know, definitive tissues. Those tissues may also be the point for some of these flukes that they now are forming complete organs, approaching complete organ systems. So around what we would consider a mouth, okay, it's not a mouth like we have, Okay, there's not an oral opening that can open and close that and masticate. It's an oral opening to the gastrointestinal tube that allows things to be pulled in. They have a highly, va uh, highly muscularized tube that can pull, using a form of peristalsis, pull stuff in through the oral sucker. The oral suckers, as I said, can be anterior. For some, they can be at a posterior end also. Generally, you're always going to find at least one anterior. You may find one mid-ventral or all the way down at the posterior end ventrally. That's why you'll also see, as you see here, the number and location used to be considered taxonomic. But over the past few decades, as we've... Uh, started to embrace new means of taxonomic uh, groupings. We are now beyond just the pure Linnaean and morphologies as we more, move more into molecular genetics. We also move into looking more at the clade system of groupings as opposed just to the evolutionary, you know, car Linnaean system that we've used previously. Monostome, diastome, amphistome. You look here and you see Cyclidium lanceolatum. Okay, it's a common monostrome. Has a singular anterior sucker that surrounds the oral opening. And you know, as you look here, as I said, there's going to be a gastrointestinal tract. You know, coming down from the oral opening, you see there is quite a bit of intestines that wraps around. Um, the squirrely stuff you see in the center, that's not a small intestine. That's not their version. That's actually the uterus. Turns out when it comes to flukes, as we're going to see in a later lectures in this chapter, um, it's all about the reproduction. Okay? So you know, the largest interior volume of their bodies will be taken up with uterus and followed by testes and then everything else. Here you see what is referred to as an amphistome, zygocytes. Has an anterior and all the way down at the, you know, at the posterior tip a ventral sucker. The anterior sucker is for aiding in pulling stuff into the oral opening. Ventral sucker is for 
hold fast, hold it in position within whatever organ or tissues it has been able to lodge itself into within its definitive host. This one is a fluke found in ducks. And then here we have the diastome, an anterior and then a mid ventral sucker. The anterior again around the oral opening to aid in pulling things into the mouth and aid in that peristalsis movement of food particles down into the gastrointestinal tract. The ventral sucker will be all about holding it in place. We have to have it, you know, this aid in holding in place because for some of these flukes, where they're going to want to position themselves in whichever tissues, we can see that there will be stuff moving across them, moving around them that could force them to be dislodged unless they were attached. Um, great example, the liver flukes. Liver flukes ingested, um, make it through the stomach, into the duodenum, then up to the gallbladder, up from the gallbladder using the bile ducts from the duodenum to the gallbladder, the gallbladder to the liver, where they will, you know, attach themselves using suckers because they're in the bile ducts and as that bile is being released by the liver it's washing over them they're using that as their food source well the movement of the bile if they weren't attached via these suckers would also dislodge them and force them back to the gallbladder gallbladder back to the small intestine what's interesting is the oral suckers themselves can have some accessory appendages. Okay, you see here around the oral sucker around the mouth, these ridges, those are muscularized ridges that are going to be there to aid in holding and aid in movement of its food particles into the oral opening. Same you see here with Bacephalus. This Bacephalus has those little tentacles that are going to aid in pulling stuff into the area referred to as the hold fast. The hold fast is where the particles are going to come in and then they're going to enter into an oral opening just that is not drawn here, which is going to then enter into its version of a gastrointestinal tract. And then you see the Rhodopolis here. The Rhodopolis, which is a parasite of American possums. The appendages you see here, I mean, look at these. They look like claws. Literally, that's what they are. Remember, we're not dealing with single cell organisms here anymore. We're dealing with multicellular, multi-tissue, multi-organ, multi-organ system organisms. So the fact that it could have some form of appendages that reach out and grab and pull and move things, grab, pull, move things toward the oral opening, that's not too out of place here. 